All right, this is lesson 5.1, analysis of functions and their graphs. We're going to talk about increasing, decreasing, and concavity. Here is a function, a curve, and you can see that the function increases here and then goes back down and then back up and back down and then all of a sudden it's constant. So from F to A, it increases. From A to B, it decreases. From B to C, it increases again. Decreases from C to D, and then it's constant on the interval from D to E. And so, we say that the function is increasing on the intervals. X is an element from F to A, union B to C. This means that on those intervals, it turns out that increasing means that the first derivative is greater than zero. The function is decreasing on the intervals from A to B, union C to D. So again, here's A to B, <coughs> here's C to D, so it's decreasing. Ultimately, this means that the first derivative is less than zero on those intervals. And then finally, the function is constant on the interval from D to E. It's completely flat. And so the consequence here, if that's the case, this means that f prime is 0 on that interval. And so this is the first thing that you have to know. You have to know how to write intervals of increase and decrease, and you've got to know the consequences for the first derivative. The first derivative is greater than 0 implies that you're increasing. Less than 0 implies you're decreasing. And equals to 0 means that you're constant. <coughs> Let's talk about concavity. Now, if you're going into dentistry, this word does not mean what you think it means. Okay? So let's talk about what concavity is. Concavity is the bendedness of the curve. And there are three categories. So this first category is called concave up. It bends this way. Second category is concave down. It bends this way. And last curve category is no concavity at all. Now, the consequences. If you have concave up, then the second derivative will be positive. If you have concave down, then the second derivative will be negative. And if you have no concavity, then the second derivative will be zero. Concavity, as a fact, is linked to the second derivative, d2 dx2 of the function. So the next thing you need to know for this lesson is what is concavity and how does it work? Next topic, <clears throat> inflection points. If a function has the following properties, number one, continuous on some open interval that I'll call i, and at some point, which I'll call x0, in that interval where it's continuous, the function changes concavity at that point. If those two things happen, then x0 is called an inflection point. Now what I've done is I've taken an example for all three parts of this lesson and I've put them in the following example. So I've got the function f of x equals x e to the negative x. And what I've done for you is I've taken the first and second derivatives and I've simplified them algebraically. Okay, here's what the curve looks like. So notice just by looking at the curve we can see it's increasing up until some point and then it's going down, it's decreasing. We can also see from here to here, it's concave down up until some point, which turns out to be 2, and then it's concave up from that point there. So the question now is, does the mathematics that I've just taught you reinforce that? Well, the answer is yes. Okay, first of all, when is the first derivative equal to 0? Well, that happens at x equals 1. Now, for all x less than 1, the first derivative is greater than 0, so we would expect the curve to be increasing until it gets to 1, and that's exactly what we see. It goes up, 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 until it hits 1, and now it's decreasing. For all x greater than 1, the first derivative is less than 0, and that implies the decreasing that we just saw. Second derivative, when does it equal 0? Well, at x equals 2. And so the first or the second derivative is less than 0 when x is less than 2. So we would expect it to be concave down. And that's exactly what we see. It's concave down until it gets to 2, and then the bendedness 
changes. Then the second derivative is greater than zero for x being greater than two, so we would expect it to, to become concave up, and that's exactly what happens. All right, let's go ahead and write our intervals of increase and decrease. Turns out the function f is now increasing on the interval from negative infinity to one, so that's where the first derivative is positive. Decreasing on the interval from one to infinity, and so that's where the first derivative is negative from one to infinity. Lastly, f is concave down on the interval from negative infinity to two, so that's where we would expect it to be concave down. And then lastly, the f is concave up on the interval from two to infinity, and that is where we see it is concave up. And that is lesson 5.1. God bless you, wherever you are today.